Hello everyone, I am Kristen Live and I am a former toxic girl. Hi Kristen. Hi, Kristen. I am Dee Dee and I am a former toxic girl as well. Hello hey, Dee Dee. And I'm Aisha Thalia and I too am a former toxic girl working on being my best self every day. Hi, Hi Aisha. Aisha. Hi guys. And this is Toxic Synonymous Podcast. We are a support group for those that once lived toxic lifestyles and no longer want to live like that. So we provide necessary solutions and treatment plans i mean i love that intro because i feel like we've been maturing even throughout this season i feel like we've all um really been evolving as individuals i've learned so much about myself and i kind of want to dig deeper into that like boo (laughs) she's still toxic (laughs) y'all but no on some real stuff like I feel like that reflection is key to this path that we're on, you know, and um, some of the things that I've learned about myself, even through like the fun, the games, the serious conversations, the jokes, the memes, the songs is um, there's been a lot of growth and maturity, I think, in all of us. And um, hopefully we've inspired that type of growth and maturity amongst you guys you know and our viewership as well but I just kind of want to know like for you what do you feel like has contributed to your toxic free path you know um is it maturity is it reflection like what do you for you what has it been um I think having a vision of where I'm going was important because I don't think that I was living with a purpose before in mm. general in life. Um, okay, so in my former toxic life, I think that I was just in the moment. And um, I think that also social media plays a big part in what influences how you feel about yourself and how you feel about others and how you treat others and et cetera. So yes, it was easy to be influenced. Um, I think also horoscopes, mm-hmm. you know, horoscopes knowing that I'm a Scorpio, so Scorpios are like this. So I would justify my personality traits. And, Ooh, that's and toxic. Whatnot. Yeah, and, and they, they, you know, I have the psychology behind it is mm-hmm. there's so many people telling me, oh, you're a Scorpio, you're like this. So then mm-hmm. I started to accept it. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm like this. And it became a self-fulfilling prophecy. Exactly. You know, so mm-hmm. I, I definitely am more aware of things mm-hmm. like that that, you know, affect me. And honestly, age. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Just just growing For up. Me too, age. Yeah, growing up and seeing that, you know, it might be all fun and games or whatever, but this is my life. Mm. So do I want to, you know, resort to, I guess, this self-fulfilling prophecy? Or do I want to change the outcome and do I want to um, decide my own path? So I started becoming more spiritual. And I think all of you guys know my, my spiritual journey. I, I'm mm. very vocal about it on Instagram. Um, so I started reading the Bible Mm -hmm. and actually I started with reading the purpose driven life. I know what you had me read too. That's what I was about to make reference to. We had to sign our our contract together and everything. mm -hmm. And I was really glad that I read that book because I feel like without purpose is a life of destruction. If you Mm -hmm. don't know your end goal. Yeah. That's where depression lies. That's where unworthiness lies. Mm -hmm. That's where all of those toxic feelings of you know that leads to destitution and isolation and a lack of self-worth lies you know so yeah because if you don't have a purpose then you could self-sabotage because Mm -hmm. i mean there's no consequence to it 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 is what it is but if you have a vision of where you're going then you know that if i do this then it's going to take me away from my path or whatever like i have a map now um, so yeah, it just it just came over time, and then I started to take things seriously. So here I am. What about you, wifey? Um, I think what has led to 
my overall like betterment of me is a self-love journey. And I think that a lot of my issues from the past just came from not really rectifying some of the sadness and things that I probably went through as a child that I didn't even realize I was going through. Mm -hmm. So like a subconscious, I had to go back and as cliche as it sound is reparent the inner child where I had to go Mm -hmm. back and tell myself these things that might, I might have experienced, you know, don't have to be the case for the rest of my life. Even if you don't even realize what happened, all kids, some way, some shape, or form, have trauma. Trauma can be whatever, mid- little traumas, big traumas. Mm. It could be a death of a loved one. It could be abuse. It could be something as simple as the way you were disciplined. Yeah, you know. And I think that for me, that 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 was huge. I had to go back and say, what is in me that is allowing others to to be attracted to this? Maybe it's an over giving nature and a forgiving nature, a thing that is going to make me a target to narcissists Mm. and make me a target to energy vampires. Mm. So once I identified what it was and started placing boundaries and Mm -hmm. started really saying, Hey, listen, this can't happen anymore. You know, you got to start standing up for yourself. And then once you love yourself so much, anybody and anything that comes into your life that doesn't feel like love is going to be an immediate Mm -hmm. turn off. You're just going to be like, if I love me like this, why would I accept this? Sure. As like treatment. Mm -hmm. And so it took a long time, but you know, also um, my fear of regret because, because of some of the things that have happened to me, I've glossed over just to keep going in survival mode. Like I'm not, Mm. I wasn't really living in the present. I was just existing. So I missed a lot of time and this will make me cry, but I missed a lot of time with my oldest daughter, not because I wasn't doing all the things I was supposed to. Everybody who knows, knows that like I wasn't out partying. I wasn't out drinking. I never did drugs. I was out working. I was a teen mom. So it was like, Mm -hmm. I had to go straight. I'm in college. Like then I went straight from college to get my master's. Mm -hmm. I never stopped. I was pushing myself so hard, but what I was realizing is, doing what I needed to do to secure her future, I was also missing out on her present. Mm. And, you know, when I think back, you never get that time back, yeah. you know? And so me not being present leads me to have a pretty healthy fear of repeating that. And then also going through a situation that was abusive um, also robbed me of the present that I have wow, with yeah. my middle daughter. So when you go into a situation where you, you're a mother, your kids come first and you're like, that, that to me was the turn for any toxicity because it was like, listen, the present is too precious to waste. Yeah. I can't waste time on, on, on things that aren't important when you know I have children who look up to me and who mm-hmm. need me and I have to be present for that. So in addition to reparenting my inner child, it was being very conscious that the present is all we have. It's fleeting. The days are short. They're long, but the years are short. And when you think of it like that, it's like it just goes by like that. And then you blink and it's like, whoa, where did the time go? Mm -hmm. Where are your your kids aren't even babies anymore. So for me, it was definitely um, a realization that the present is a gift and we're not guaranteed tomorrow. So why spend it being negative? Why spend it being why spend it living in fear of someone, Mm -hmm. you know, reclaiming your power? you know, you know, advocating for yourself, setting boundaries. So boundaries is super duper hard because like we're all from the islands and you know Mm -hmm. how our parents and the islands get down like you know they'll sign you up to do stuff Mm -hmm. you know you you end up like by by nature you know our upbringing our background is you know it takes a village we all help carry the load Mm -hmm. you know and sometimes you you lose yourself in that yeah you know like you you're just again surviving it's it's just like This is the one team, one dream. Our common goal is just like survival. Yeah. And when you get, when you start to move away from that and you start to put yourself first, Mm -hmm. you see that, that, that difference, you know, Mm -hmm. and you see that shift. And I feel like putting yourself first definitely changes the way that you react to things too, because you might think that putting yourself first in this toxic climate or Mm -hmm. this toxic, you know, uh, society that we live in it would be like getting your lick back is putting yourself first. Like I ain't Mm -hmm. gonna let nobody play me, whatever. But I've gotten to the point that I don't even want to feed my energy into something, regardless of whether it requires revenge or pettiness or getting my lick back. Like I ain't got time for that. You know what I mean? So Mm -hmm. that's part of 
growing up and maturing and and moving away from toxicity That's what because I'm still trying to work not, on. You're gonna get. <laughs> like I'm working. No, on. it is like because I'm I, working on. I, it. I, like, I'm not. I'm not gonna lie. I get the urge. Everybody I'll, does. I'll think about it's, it. I'll be like, damn, like they they should be taught a lesson. But I ain't gonna be the one. It's because I'm them. a teacher. I'm like so punitive in nature. I'm mm. I'm also like I'm big on positive reinforcement, negative reinforcement, like. I think what I learn about myself is that my toxic trait is that I'll act like, okay, cool, I'll take that to the chin, and then I'm going to punish you and make you regret it, you know? <laughs> right. So it's like... Yeah. But yeah. you know what? Sometimes the best punishment is removing yourself from that person or that situation. For sure. You have gotten better at that. You do cut people yeah, off I, more I, than... I do. It's I'll great. Just be like, because you know... You know they suffering without you. You know For what I mean? For sure, a hundred percent. And yeah, that that might be a advantage or whatever. That might be a a, a positive uh, consequence that comes out of that. But at the same time, you save yourself from getting stuck in a loop of mm -hmm. entertaining that 100%. bullshit. You know? Yeah, no, for sure, a thousand percent. But what about you, Dee Dee? What about me in terms of what? I think she kind of just answered it. No, yeah. that was your toxic. That's it. That's it. <laughs> sure. Not anything else you want to share with just us? Piggybacking. I mean, was there something else? Um, I just feel like um, no age, growth. She goes. Yeah, said like, that. yeah. I, I think it's like exactly Maturity. what you guys said. I feel like I've evolved. Basically, I feel like the company I keep, like you said, I've mm, I've cut a out. Mm -hmm. a lot of loose ends yeah, you know if funny. i if someone isn't serving my purpose like you said yeah um i'm a firm believer in iron sharpeneth iron and i could say that all of my girlfriends inspire me like you inspire me you inspire me molly inspires me lisa inspires me cassie inspires me caroline inspires mm -hmm. me she got a lot I'm of friends y'all <laughs> <laughs> i'm she inspired She's popular. by the the people who are close to me yeah you yeah. know and like I look at you being a mom, I see all the things that you do, all the hats that you wear, you know, running a business. I see you doing the same thing. I see all of the steps that you take, and you and I, I love that you guys like encourage me. Like, nah, Didi, you need to do this, this, and this. Nah, we gotta do right. this. Like, nope, let's go. We gonna take these pictures. We gonna do this. We gonna. So it's like I find in so much security mm -hmm. yeah. and home and comfort within the Your company group. that yeah. I keep, you know, like yeah. I honestly feel like like you guys are my home, you know? Like you you yeah. come Aww. over. No, but it's the, it's the truth. Like, you know, like <laughs> that's why my weekends I'd be like, "Girl, okay. shut up." <laughs> it's like, "What are you doing?" You know what I'm saying? I yeah. like my my like that's my retreat my friends i check yeah. in with dd Dee Dee, like she's my man like that's bro, so cute. i'll be like, like where are you going <laughs> wait what you mean what you, you didn't doing? tell me you were about to go eat <laughs> right literally i'd be like who? like if i hear another voice who's, who's that who's in the background <laughs> you didn't tell me you were having company who is literally that? oh you're going so, to dinner right i don't know where about this. oh i didn't get the invite <laughs> i don't know well you work you don't go out of school myself i still, I still, I still need to be invited, invited right, <laughs> right. <laughs> that's funny so, it's it's one of those situations where i feel like you know, just knowing when to cut somebody off, knowing when something doesn't yeah. serve you. That's kind of like the serenity prayer, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Lord, give me the strength to change the things I need to change. Let right. go of the things that I can't change and the wisdom to know and the discernment to know the difference between the two. Yeah. Yeah. And I feel like that is what really has put my life at a place of peace and calm, good. you know? Yeah. That's all it's about is like searching for your peace, trying to find yeah. your peace and just being in a space of serenity where you're just like, nobody can, no one can pop my bubble. This is my bubble of right. peace. Yeah. But I love yeah, that. piggybacking off of what you said, like that was so huge for me. The people that I surrounded myself with definitely affect me, mm -hmm. one. And I mean, having a support system, a community, um, I'm not the type of girl that has a lot of girlfriends, you know, mm -hmm. like you have a lot of girlfriends. I got like one or two good, good girlfriends, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and then hanging out with you now, I have a lot more friends mm -hmm. than I did before, but you know, I'm more of like an isolator. I'm a loner, um, yeah, but I'm recognizing how important it is to have these type of friendships and, and you know, Family. girl friendships, yeah. especially. You especially know? with girl girls. Like yeah. my, girl, my girl group, I'm not gonna lie, we're girl girls. Anybody who comes and disrupts that, it's like, <laughs> ah, 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 Right. Ah, ah. Girl power. <laughs> right. Because, <laughs> right. 
Yeah. Like we're I love it really. I, I feel like most of the girlfriends that I've mm-hmm. had in my life were not like that. They were more like mm-hmm. every single time they get a boyfriend, like they gone. You know what I mean? Right. And it's like Listen. you don't see them until they and break I, up. And whatever. I've had friends that are in my core group that get a boyfriend and they gone, and that's the worst because. It's, you know, one thing about me is I am punitive and it, it took a lot, you know, for I'm me. I'm not to, welcoming you back oh, in the circle. Yeah, no, it's. You're out of the circle of trust now. It's a really Same. conscious yeah. effort. I'm, like, nah. My petty self. You ain't know us when you was booed up. Right. So now I forget to invite you. This is why I got a pass <laughs> because I was never a go out person anyway. So right. even <laughs> when I didn't have no man, I would just be by myself. So Didi could never really so hold it against me because when I right. had a man. It was no different than when I didn't have a man. Literally, because she ain't going really out no way. You can't really convince me to go in right. here anyway. So right. it's no, just the same. Now my man just hangs out in like my whole cave. Like we just got a little cave of a bubble. Now we just all together. Nah, like, now I got to come to the house for y'all. Right. <laughs> so sad. He, look at me. He's our man right. now. <laughs> He's our husband. Our husband. No. But <laughs> it's true. Cute. You you know, people do disappear. They do disappear, disappear when. Yeah. And but I, sometimes I don't understand the better. why. No, no, no. Like people disappear for the better. But I'm saying like when you get in a relationship i just don't feel like that's necessary you know like i feel like you yeah, maybe for the about first balance. couple weeks first hope yeah, getting to know get somebody, to know somebody like or a, whatever a but lover you, phase like, you know when you completely like, isolate your friends like, that's actually a red flag your, yeah and you you can't yeah. balance and and it's like oh, okay well now i'm not mixy mixy with your dude either and i don't like right. him either <laughs> i you feel know? like usually when they isolate it's because their man don't like you <laughs> Yeah, that's those uh, are red flags because like actually yeah. your relationship, whether you're dating a man or a woman, whoever, should never, never be a situation where then you don't have friends and family. You know, um, I I do see that then that person can be too consumed in that person, and then that could yeah. be a love bombing type situation. Right. Like mm-hmm. I, I I typically get that that rap from. <laughs> 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 like my girlfriends, their men don't usually like me because. Be out and having fun or whatever. They might pass like control. I don't go out anymore. But I mean, like, I was outside and I was having fun, and then I was bringing my girls to places that you know were were good to go and Mm -hmm. whatever. So um, they didn't like that, and then they were just kind of like. Do they act like they don't friends. like you when they don't like? Because this, this is oh, my problem. Oh, and then one time I snitched on on my girl's dude, mm-hmm. so he definitely didn't like me after that. I'd be snitching and be like, um, and, and when it. I see them, they'd be like, hey, sis, hey. <laughs> 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 like, because that's that the thing. That is how like, you are, dudes, though. That's what's funny. They yeah. don't, like, the girl, first now of all. Now I'm going to snitch harder, first of all. You but see, my thing is, I don't be it. understanding when you give intel and then the girl, like, if I give you meaningful intel, I get it. You can let them know whatever you know, but don't drag me into it because then it's awkward when you keep them. And right. now it's like, yeah. now I know you don't like me and I don't really care for you. Yeah, and they I don't want you to like hang out other. anymore. Right. They make it difficult. So and like, you made I've it literally difficult had for us. A, a girlfriend that her man don't like me, so she's not allowed to hang out with me. I I've, wish somebody I've been would in that tell me what I'm allowed too. to do. I've been in that situation that at, at the time, my man did not like mm. my best friend and we used to sneak around like to go see each other it was like it was that's a whole crazy thing. yeah that is that's crazy. i'm glad that's I'm... your former life because i could i can't even picture a life Wild. like i wish somebody would tell me tell i can't, me. I can't hang out with somebody yeah. like, literally the minute I, I we mean, broke up like me and her were like out of the bat like, or whatever he was like these bitches were friends oh. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the kingpin <laughs> I wish. right so, yeah. make me hang out with them more literally I was so submissive any dude it. that like because dudes will try it like you had an ex that was like you're always with Didi you just, but he didn't think you were a bad influence he yeah, didn't but think you were a bad influence he felt His like reasoning if we was, were all like he, he was felt like ignored. the third wheel when we were together and that was so ridiculous it was like you just ignore me every time she's around and I was like bro <laughs> like no <laughs> it's just, we're, we're talking about, about like <laughs> we'd be walking the street holding hands dancing with each other we kind of he was kind of the third wheel why he was just, sir why are you here being boring <laughs> no like <laughs> but it's but when we be around but I, in fairness i wasn't around much so when i would see her and mm-hmm. yeah. he was a fr- he was out of state when i would see her it would be like oh th- the reason to come out okay he's in town let's go do something mm-hmm. and then i would see i hadn't seen her in a long time either so we'd be right. excited to see each other right. so it's like whatever Look, listen whatever friends but i wish 
I wish somebody would say she couldn't, because guess who was still coming everywhere we went? Exactly. <laughs> so Hi guys, you I'm might here. not like it, but <laughs> and you pay for it. For you might not That'd like it. That'd be the funny part. They can't stand me, but my friends are gonna bring me along, and you gotta front the bill. Right. <laughs> That's what he was <laughs> mad about. That's what it came down to. It's like I eat a lot. feels like a dependent. You're still toxic, girl. <laughs> Listen, I'm not. Jeez. But I'm gonna eat and. And if I'm around, I'm going to eat good. That's so right. funny. Listen. And he'd be like, Dee never takes out her wallet. I was like, and is she <laughs> supposed to? <laughs> like, <laughs> And I never will. Yeah, no, that's oh, what's crazy. Funny. Rightfully so. <laughs> She's like, that's still the toxic part of me that I'm not going to change. I just don't think it's toxic. I don't think Do you toxic. think it's toxic? I think that for some people, depending, <laughs> Miami culture is a little different. Like, I think Miami culture is very big on, like, everybody knows that if you're out with a guy, that guy's going to be the one to pay for everything. But I think there are other people that are actually on real-life budgets. And I know that Miami, that's very foreign for a lot of Miami people. Totally, yeah. So there are a lot of men who never factor that in, and especially, like, anal retentive men that are like, oh, I must factor this, this. Those type of people mm. are like, I thought I was going to spend this amount on a date, and now this other person, and it's kind of like, that's why I, I was the type of person to always say, I got no problem. I'll chip in. I'll pay for my friend's food. Like, I'm not the type that's yeah, going to put like that. No, I ain't doing that. <laughs> but I mean, I think it depends here's why if I'm you're not dating somebody who like has a ton of money versus someone who has a regular job. It's very. Right. But I think it's emasculating if you allow your girls to put their like, depending on. What if he asked for, but he never did. He did want to pay. Yeah, and he, he did. did make good money. Right, but I'm just saying, if she's the one that has to front your bill, that's a masculine. Oh, he, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what exactly. I mean? So I, I just wouldn't even put my man in that situation. Like, so if you I wouldn't know, bring somebody else. Yeah, like if I know, not me. you know, old boy's on a budget. Because I can like, pay for I'm it. Not, mm -mm, no, and it'll be group that. stuff. It wasn't I'll, like I'll we go were out just, with my girls. Yeah, but, but you're not coming. But that those those situations yeah, where she yeah, came, mm. we, it wasn't like she came on a date with us. Right, the situation right. she came, we were all going out in a group anyway. Yeah. So what you just gonna invited, be right? He's broke. He, he just knew, but he wasn't broke. He no, it wasn't money. a girl group. I mean, it was not, like not a mixed group on a budget. Mm. Todd, that's toxic. But he was visiting me from out of town. I don't care. So it was like, <laughs> what are you gonna do? Of course you're gonna come. He's and if you don't want to pay for my friend, then I'll pay. No. Well, she never had to pay because. No, he was good. Right. And he was a great guy, but it wasn't he that. Was, it yeah. was just, you know, I know that there are people that don't look at that Miami life as typical. It's just we, mm -hmm. we, we, we get jaded and I think we think that everybody is just a baller and everybody's going to, but that's not the case for a lot of people. Of course not. Yeah, I don't yeah. think but it's you gotta the case, know your but man. it's just you gotta my know the thing situation, is, you know? like, if I'm with... If it's like a bunch of couples or something like that, then I feel like, like all the men should split the check like yeah or just one of them should just take it you know but if it's a situation where it's like you know we would have gone out like i've been in situations where we're all gonna go out in a group girl dinner and then someone's like oh my man's tripping oh no he wants then he to needs to pay and invites himself nah then he and needs to pay thinks that no. it's gonna be like oh we're gonna split it like we would have done if nah, we were all girls and i'd be like um sis like let him know he don't ruin our girls. That's girl the kind of situation yeah, I was no, thinking it was. No, yeah, no, no, it was no, a, it's not, a it was mixed like, group of guys and girls. Yeah, other oh. guys would be there too. Mm. So let's just say there were guys that invited a bunch of girls, and that but they're not his responsibility. Those girls are that guy. It's just been us three too, us. like at the pool and at the the well, hotel and stuff. Our other friend was there. Oh yeah, yeah our other yeah, homeboy was true. there. So it did for the most part. Yeah, it was he's groups like of injecting mixed. himself into oh, the girls' no. night. And then, no, 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 no. He's like, your girls. I just gotta mean, but pay. if you're uncomfortable being the man that has to pay for a couple women, and it's other people are bringing a couple women, mm -hmm. that's when I was like, got you. Let yeah, me, yeah, yeah. I got, I let me that. help out yeah, a little if, bit. <laughs> I'm, I wouldn't just, be I'm so generous kind. like that. You are. I love that about you. You are super generous, and I'm I'm understanding that I. Certain people, they have a lot of things going on that we don't know. We don't know everybody's situation. So mm. I'm, I'm, right. I'm cognizant of that. But I think that conversation that. needs to be had before you get there because, mm. <laughs> you know, that's a, it's an awkward thing. Like, oh, who's paying? And everyone's looking around. I feel like mm -hmm. you should know your man. You should have that conversation. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. and then I would it, never it, bring any. I, I couldn't remember with, with my, my, my like ex-fiance. I would never play that when we would all go out to Prime or whatever, mm -hmm. and there would be a bunch of chicks that came that mm -hmm. were brought by that that other the girl. You know what I'm talking mm -hmm. about? When mm -hmm. we would go out, I was like, Nah, you don't have to cover them because mm -hmm. I don't know who these people are, and I would never oh, do different. that to my. No, no, I was no, talking about But they weren't his. They weren't our friends. They weren't our friends. But my friends, of course, he was always willing to cover that. But them other people, just because you're a man and you're at the table, doesn't mean you have to pay for 
all these women. I, I don't know. I agree with that 100%. Like, yeah, I mean, these so. chicks are out there looking for free about food. strangers. Yeah, I know. Right. And Both they just knew. Hosts. They <laughs> they just knew because it was a bunch of people that, you know, oh, yeah, that's going to be taken care of. No, it's not. Uh, I'm right. Go do dishes no. and figure it out. No, because right. I'm not going to let my man deplete our funds right. because right. you're a woman. No. That part. But well, as we've far learned. as me and my community, Right, <laughs> in our community. Yeah, in terms of me and mine. Right, in terms of us, we, we shall we shall feast. Yeah, <laughs> so we have come a long way. We've I come along. We've learned a lot. I'm proud of us. I'm proud of me. I am. I'm proud of it. But like, I I feel like we trust ourselves more too. Yep. Yeah, I agree with that. Like, I feel like we. Hundred percent. I do not trust the old Kristen. <laughs> <laughs> No, I, I, I really well. try like i i feel like you know you're one of those people who like you you're so instinctive you know like you you even if you think like it's illogical but this is how i feel you be spot on like that's like you I have am. a sixth sense you know i am run by my intuition mm-hmm. and this took a long time too because mm-hmm. um after undergoing a lot of gaslighting mm-hmm. by anybody that's close to you you may begin to not trust yourself. And if you've been deceived or hurt in a big way, you will most likely begin to look around at everybody and second guess yourself. But the most pers- the person that you're most angry with after deception or after major betrayal or after gaslighting is yourself because you wonder how mm. you could have betrayed yourself. How did you not see, you right. know, hindsight is twenty twenty. They always, always say that. And you know, some red flags don't feel like red flags and some things, you like know, some surprised. things culturally aren't red flags to some people that are red flags to others. Mm. So we have to be really careful about victim blaming. But I do know that after what I went through, I had to use discernment to figure out, is it my anxiety or is it my intuition? Mm. And but I get gut feelings. I've always got I always get gut feelings about things. And I have to learn to lean into listening to my inner self, especially when it comes to my time management and my energy Mm. exertion, because I am not somebody with a tremendous amount of extra energy. I'm just Mm. not like people might think that. But if you guys notice, like I'm never on Instagram live. I barely post anything on online. I'm not very big on creating content. Like I used to be when I had a little bit more time, but now it's you like- You also have a lot of children. I have, yeah, I have a lot of kids. Yeah. <laughs> I have three daughters, you know, and I am really big on, like I said, being present mm-hmm. because yeah. I remember when I was a teen mom and even in my early 20s, I passed up on so many opportunities, things that I really, really wanted to do, but I knew that I had to be present for my daughter. Yeah. I really, I was offered to do this t- documentary in Thailand about elephants, but I'd have to live there for six oh months. My God. Boom, not, yeah. I was offered this show on TNT, like where I would be, it was like a little sitcom and they really wanted me to be a part of it. Boom, couldn't take it. It would have required me being in Atlanta. And I remember just being like so s- sad, but at the same time, like, I'm okay because I've been a mom my whole adult life. Mm. Right. My whole adult life, I've, I've been a mom. And it's the most important job to me. And I realized that once I had kids, my dreams took a back seat to their dreams. Not to say mm. that that doesn't mean they shouldn't see mom living her purpose, happy, fulfilled, have hobbies and things like that. All the things that I have. But I did realize that I have to be so careful with my energy because I have, just like everyone else, I have a lot of things going on in the background that people don't know about, that one day hopefully I'll be able to talk about. One day hopefully I'll be able to have the free speech to discuss. Mm -hmm. But I can't right now. But also, I just have a small baby who I still breastfeed. She's going on too, but you know, they recommend you, World Health Organization recommends you breastfeed through age two and it helps with preventing pediatric cancer. There are so many things that it's like I put, my sleep to the back burner. I put my daughters first. I put making money first so that I can afford to send my daughters to private school. I, it's like all of those things mean so much to me. And when I was sitting back and I was taking an assessment of all the things I do, as much as I love to do podcasts, I love to be here with you guys. And it's really some of my only time that I, I'm like, I'm chilling with girls. You know, while I have these young kids, I realized how fleeting time is and yeah. how you blink and it's over and how, you know, my six-year-old is very demanding and how my two, almost two-year-old is also very demanding and now I'm married. And I just was like, I hate the fact that I have to cut some things out, but I also would hate myself even more if I wasn't true yeah. to being like, what is, what is something that, you know, 
is taking up time that Mm -hmm. also I'm a perfectionist. If I do something, I want to do it perfectly. (laughs) I want to do it to the point where I'm proud of it and that the other people are proud of it too. And if I can't give my 100% to somebody then someone else is picking up my slack and I don't like that either I don't want to be a part of something where people have to be like well you know Aisha's busy so I got to do this or Aisha's here that's not fair to the people that I love and the people that I work with even when I had to stop teaching for a while it had to be something where I was like I don't feel like I'm getting out of it what I'm putting into it and I also mm. don't want to shortchange the children yeah. because at that moment it's like these kids deserve a hundred percent teacher and if I can only be 70 percent right. then they need a teacher that's going to come in here and be a hundred percent but I When I decided to go into teaching, it was because I knew I wanted to have my summers off so that I could spend time with my kids. I've always wanted to be around my kids. Mm. And so with that, it's like I had to tell you guys last week that I just don't think that I can be a permanent member here, but I would love to keep coming back and doing what I can to assist and help grow because I love the mission. I love the purpose. I just wish that I had five of me so i could be a, a present this wife podcast will be real lit. right i could be a present wife i could be a present mom i could still breastfeed i can attend the pta meetings i can do the color runs with my other daughter i can mm-hmm. it's like there's so much on my plate and it's just yeah. it becomes overwhelming so coming back to being true to self i was like all i do is piss myself off because i'll lie to everybody else trying to be present I got this. right i, I got it, it. No, no i can do it no mm-hmm. and I'm, I'm actually burning the candle at both ends mm-hmm. yeah. so part of also staying true to me is that my kids see me and see a whole mother a present mother mm-hmm. you know and i i just have to i have to and you it's have to sad prioritize. Uh, yeah you know, it's sad i remember i was i was like in teary eyed as i was coming over here because sometimes and i don't ever want to be an example to mothers that be like oh well you have to just when you become a mother that's it that's all it is it's Your mother's over stop everything else yeah. i'm not saying that that's everyone's sometimes the best most fulfilled mothers are the ones who decide to go back to work mm-hmm that's not me (laughs) like I the best version of me is with my daughters the best version of me is as at home with my kids and everything else is on the side to that and I'm so happy that I have a husband who literally is like when I do decide to work or I'm going out he has a water bottle waiting for me in the car he's packed a lunch he he will help make sure the kids are bathed he makes sure that the he's like what do what do you need me to make for dinner he always makes breakfast I pretty much try to handle dinner, but he does it all so like it's also not fair to him to not have a present wife like we sure. haven't we've just been married a year like i can't just be bedtime is a hard time and that's the other mm. thing we film at night so like you know because yeah. they have to work during the day or do stuff during the day like we have to do it at night and it's just not it's not working for my schedule all the time yeah. listen as much as i hate that you're not going to be able to continue you can always be a guest and i just love that you trust me and Kristen with like finally being able to give in to your needs because I felt know, bad. Like you I don't like quitting consistently, but you're not quitting. Yeah. I don't like the, I don't like the idea of letting people down. And I think that was what was hard for me. It's like, no, if you sign up for something, you follow through. And you did. And we completed the whole season and it's been dope. And, and I feel like we've learned so much about ourselves and each other throughout this process. And I just, you know, like, I just I'm glad that you didn't like subscribe to that toxic loyalty because you are a cancer and you are like like she Mm -hmm. you called me and you were just like D you know I like and it it was a couple of times where I was just like you know you're like I'm I'm doing this and I'm doing that and I'm trying and I'm like girl you got this but if you don't you weren't the only one like one of my best friends Sheila she was like girl you're so good at this don't ever stop it was like before I even because you are about right. stopping. Yeah, you're excellent and then somebody it. else was like yeah. oh you know don't ever stop and you know we appreciate your viewpoint I do feel like my talents are best in the blogging I feel like okay. sometimes I'm yeah. able to articulate because I can go back I can edit I can say what I mean I don't sure. have to slip up I'm one of those people such mm-hmm. a perfectionist that I don't like saying something and then having to clarify it I like to write it out a bunch of times and then I can be like this is what I meant to say right because I do want to have a space where I can you know advocate for women i do want to be in a space where i can advocate especially for women who are leaving abusive situations i want to be in a space to advocate for you know um children i i just and and motherhood and and the importance of having a village and all those things that like we talk about that i think are so important it's just like is that more important and talking to everyone else more important than actually being home and reading my daughter a bedtime story 
like and yeah. you blink and it's over and it's mm. like i don't want to have that feeling of regret yeah i feel you and i feel like when it is my time to have kids i'll be the same way oh for sure you know y'all you both know. will right y'all yeah. both yeah. will yeah. like I'm gonna, I'm gonna be very very yeah I, I mean i feel like it's a part of your purpose you know like it's my it's your my purpose, purpose is to raise these children yeah. and and give them that experience uh, that you want to give them yeah. um so there's definitely no like we we yeah. all feel you we yeah. get it you know what i mean it's the most important as much job. as we want to keep you and as much as we we love i was like maybe i can come back like you know once a month <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we guess. she's but bargaining we, us when <laughs> we talking about stuff we right. could be like, this is yeah. a great episode for wifey you know right. yeah, yeah especially you, because i listen, feel like if there's anything about hate men call me uh, girl, no, i'm just kidding either. i don't hate men i love men i i love men so much yeah. that i just want them to be better men for our daughters and for themselves mm. but if there's anything where it's like oh i think this would be a good but I'm there because yeah. you know the the world needs a little bit more of me but my daughter my daughters right. need me the most yeah and they deserve you yeah so I mean I feel like this is a good place to end I feel Woo! like I know Somebody right. we could cry. definitely hug it out hug it out I like wait <laughs> Okay. But yeah. <laughs> you have to decapitate herself over there literally <laughs> unalive me <laughs> but um so i guess this is one can of those we, things can we the end ending, on a good note i was a gonna little, say that this is a little, you want to end with me a little mean i action. like me just, just one last all right let's do okay, last after one <laughs> we can't, time we can't leave it on all right let's go let's go me for note. me right what you got in your arsenal right, what you got in your deck Mean for mean versus. All right, let's go. All right. Just paid for his 11s. One missed call. Where you at? Bring my Michael Jordans. <laughs> right. Is that toxic? Wait, I just paid for his 11s. One missed call. Me. Where you at? Bring my Michael Jordans. <laughs> if you pay for it, you're trying to take it back. <laughs> no, that's toxic. Over one. That I, would, is toxic. I would never do that because usually the man gives better gifts. And I don't oh, want him to do that funny. to me. <laughs> that's oh, you wouldn't get nothing back from me, even if we, I took my stuff back. But I, see? I wouldn't take my she stuff back. It. No, I'm saying I wouldn't take my stuff back. <laughs> no, you wouldn't. You wouldn't take it mm-hmm. back. Mm-hmm. All right. Let's <laughs> I was like, wait, would you? Would you take it back? <laughs> Definitely take it back. What you, you got? All right. Let's see. Um, you bold as hell to wake up and drink coffee and ain't got no job. Oh my god, I saw that one today. <laughs> <laughs> like what do you what do you need energy for? Wait, what? <laughs> Unless you're a stay at home mom, what do you need energy for? That is toxic. <laughs> but Tommy, I would, you ain't got I, no job. <laughs> but I would look at someone drinking coffee like Where you headed? <laughs> what are you doing? You headed like what? I don't know. That Why is toxic. I agree with longer. that one. <laughs> I want my ninja to pat pat a hoe on the head and say, nah, I'm straight. I got a chick. Hell no, why are you patting her head for? Oh, you don't even want her to touch her. Like, why, why are we good. touching? I, 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 patting on the head I, is so disrespectful. That is. No, I'm good. Just I'm patting good the head is like a I dog. Got, like, I got a chick. Damn. Is that toxic or no? No, nah, I want him to be like. <laughs> you want him to be like, ew. I'll, I'll, I'll play you for your heart and then like <laughs> dunk on that bitch. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Yo, That's old boy was shooting from half court. Like, yo, oh, you'll play for my heart? Shush. That was toxic. That movie's toxic. I, Love and basketball, I want, yo. I, You know, like, that wasn't the part where you're supposed to cry, but, like... I'm not gonna lie, I got my heart sunk for her. I was Girl, like, <gasps> everybody else was like, oh, that's so sweet. They're playing for her heart. Yo, he was dunking on the hoe. <laughs> <laughs> that was <laughs> crazy. That was crazy. All right, your turn. All right, so imagine you die and they kick you out the group chat. Oh damn! That's funny. I mean, <laughs> damn! They just didn't want to send your oxygen? nah. Because what if you someone else gets your number after you die? Someone that's else so gets you, your phone you kicking your daddy homie out the group. Yeah, because I don't know who damn. I'm sending those messages to anymore. They might be. It might be the ops. You never that know is, who's gonna get it. That's true. Question: When you die, would you let your family get in your phone? Nah, I'm gonna have hell no. Expression. Burn my phone. I'm gonna <laughs> throw it in the lake. <laughs> I want mine to blow up. <laughs> Self destruct. It's not because I have any incriminating things in my phone. It's just the memes, you know. It's the memes. Actually, now, now, actually, I can actually safely say that anybody could go through my phone at this point. It's dry. Bro, you ain't got no risky pictures. Mm-hmm. None. You send Swear to your God, husband. I don't send him any. What? 
I don't, the cloud. I don't believe in all that. <laughs> nope. He could see it in person. I'm not. We're not That's sending true. nothing. You well, you got my business in your phone. I mean, yeah. <laughs> nope. I mean, and you like, know what? That's one thing I loved. I always knew. <laughs> like as crazy as that is, like any crazy exes or anything like that, you can't. They can't say they have anything on me because I didn't. I've never done any tapes. Mm-hmm. I've never done it. Oh, I was wow. like, nah, bro. That's good. Nope. And if they see your phone, you, we, we we have talked about each and every last one of them. Yeah, that they gonna see. <laughs> right. Having your girl as your lock screen is therapeutic. You can be having the worst day ever, then look down at your phone and say, if I could handle being with this beautiful, crazy bitch, I could handle anything. Oh, <laughs> that's so sweet. <laughs> it's that's the sweetest flattered. thing anybody's ever said. It's no toxic. No. No. All right. So should we end on this one? On mine? Let's hear it. <laughs> this one's so good. Nut in a pretty girl. Well, Nothing happens. Not in an ugly girl. I've seen <laughs> Boom, <before>. baby raccoons. <laughs> Damn. Uh, baby raccoons is wild. Damn. Baby raccoons is crazy. It's because the pretty girls ran and That's got that plan B. Why are Listen, you nutty? They knew better. In anybody. The pretty girls be <laughs> no, like, you toxic. ain't going to trap me. You ain't going to trap me. <laughs> and they probably look like raccoons because of the man anyway. That probably part. ain't even her. <laughs> he <laughs> needed some good genetics ass. to balance it out. Balance, out. yeah. And, and they be knowing what they be doing. They be... Mm-mm-mm. Last one. How you twenty one veneers? Did you even give your real teeth a chance <gasps> to grow? Oh my god, that's so disrespectful. I be seeing eighteen year olds with veneers. That veneer culture is toxic, though. That's you literally lot. have perfect teeth that I thought. I they like were my fake. smile. You have perfect smile. But I would definitely. Gl- I'm glad I didn't. Girl, I'm you so know they have those veneers they now that they're just like the the little caps. They're, yeah, but they mm. don't they don't shave your teeth down. Oh, okay, well, that's what I was gonna. Say. Yeah, but then yours would be really big because you. My girl have Tiffany full teeth. just just on the ones that need it. Like if you have a little mm. baby tooth, like I got a little shark oh. tooth. Like I got little teeth, so I could probably afford to go a little bit bigger. But you think you have you little have teeth? Sh- she I have baby teeth. Yeah. Teeth. We I both do. I think I have little teeth. Yeah, you do too. Let me see. We both have baby teeth. Beyonce does too, so we're in good company. Yeah, that means all pretty girls have baby teeth and That's big foreheads. Yeah, My for forehead sure. Forehead is huge. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have thoughts. I have movies. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, what pretty girl doesn't have a Your big forehead? Your forehead so big. <laughs> My five head. I heard it all growing up. There's no insult that could touch me because I heard it all growing up. My sisters. We're savages. Yeah. <laughs> the yabba yabba do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. Sausage toes. Yabba dabba do. Feet. Flintstone feet. Limousine feet. Now I'm looking down at Roly poly oly. Yeah. I got, I got long. Sausage toes. I have I long. I too. Toes. I got long feet. Long. Girl, I got both feet. She just has. She's tall. <laughs> so she. It fits her. Yeah. yeah. I got long ass toes. Nice to be like Lady Shaq. <laughs> Whose foot is that? <laughs> Not Lady Shaq. Whose foot is that? <laughs> Yo. <laughs> Yo, when I tell you, Crystal was dating a dude, and the dude was like, "Um, you ain't by oh, yourself," no. because my feet were in the picture. You would, and I, and I was wearing my LeBrons too. That's why. Oh Yo, my that's God, that's that's foot. a dude's foot. That ain't Dee Dee's foot. Girl was. You had to f- send the whole picture, huh? Listen, whole I sure on. did with the whole leg. I was Damn. like, little on bitch, that note. right? <laughs> That's terrible. <sighs> All right, guys. So this has been a roller coaster of an episode. Concluding our season one, y'all. We did it. We did it, Joe. We did it, Joe. <laughs> Signing off. Meeting adjourned.